Yo, what up guys? So now let's talk about scalar multiplication on vectors. And what exactly do we mean by this? Well, let's say that we have a vector here, some kind of vector x. And let's say that we multiply it by some kind of number, some kind of scalar k. Now, this k can be positive, negative. Basically, k is an element of any real number. And the real question is, is when we multiply this vector by a certain real number, what effects does that have on the original vector? So to discuss the effects on the vector x, when we multiply it by scalar k, I'm going to go through six different cases. And for each case, I'm going to describe what happens to the vector x. And then I'm going to show it in a diagram. So I have these vectors. These should all be the same vectors, same magnitude, same length. And under each one of them, for each case, I'm going to show how the effect of the scalar looks like in a diagram. So let's start with our first case. What happens when the scalar that we multiply the vector by is greater than positive 1? Well, the resultant vector will keep the same direction. However, it will have a greater magnitude. So it will look something like this. Depending on what scalar we multiply it by, it will keep the same direction, but it will have a greater magnitude. So if we multiply it by 2, same direction, twice the magnitude. Now let's go over the next case. What happens when k is equal to 1? Well, when k is equal to 1, there is no change in direction. or magnitude, which makes sense. We just end up with the same vector when we multiply it by 1. So that vector would look exactly the same as our original. <clears throat> now, what if we multiply it by a positive number that's in between 0 and 1? So usually some kind of fraction. Well, what would happen is you'll end up with the same direction, however, you'll have a smaller magnitude. So same direction, smaller magnitude. So if you multiply the original x vector by one half, the direction will stay the same, but the magnitude will be half of the original. Moving on to the next case, what happens when our scalar is zero? So when our scalar is zero, our result is the zero vector. We basically end up <clears throat> with nothing. So zero times a vector x would give us the zero vector. So there's nothing even to draw for that case. Now for these next two cases, we're going to be dealing with numbers that are negative. So let's start with, uh, with a number that's in between 0 and negative 1. Well, since you're multiplying it by a negative number, you'll end up with an opposite direction. But the absolute value of that number is going to be less than 1. So you'll have a smaller magnitude. 
So how will this look like in a diagram? Well, you'll have a vector that has a shorter length or a smaller magnitude than the original one and it will be going in the opposite direction. So this original vector x was going in this direction. This uh, new vector kx, if the k is between 0 and negative 1, it will be going in the opposite direction. And let's deal with our final case. So when k is less than negative 1, since it's negative, the resultant vector will have a opposite direction. And since the absolute value of the scalar is greater than 1, it will have a greater magnitude. So the resultant vector, greater magnitude, but opposite direction of the original. So that's it, that's all the cases. So pretty useful tool if you're not sure what effects a certain scalar has on a vector, just refer to this table, refer to the specific case that you're working with and you'll be able to figure it out.